Just drop. Hello there, this is a video going over some games that I think make good use of the Super Nintendo mouse. Some people are under the impression that the mouse is only good for like three or four games, but click the link in the description to see a plethora of other games that make good use of it. This is not a definitive video, just a few games I like that aren't particularly well known that make good use of the mouse accessory. If I were to do a full video of every SNES mouse game, this video would be like 25 minutes long. No thanks. Thanks to Ack from the Racket Boy forums for the idea for this video. Of course, everyone knows about Mario Paint, which remains a fun game if you have a really young child. Really, if you have a toddler that wants to get into video games, start them out with Mario Paint, I say. It should be noted though that this game isn't just painting, like it's Microsoft Paint on Super Nintendo. You can create stamps, looping animations, and your own soundtrack. There's also a fly swatting game called Nat Attack, which is self-explanatory. Moving on, Mario and Wario came out for the Super Famicom, but never made it to the United States for whatever reason. It's all in English though, so no translation worries. It's a very simple puzzle game, and its appeal is to keep going just to see how far you can get, really. But it makes very efficient use of the mouse. There's three different difficulty settings, or speeds. The game starts really easy, but can get somewhat complicated the further you play. Mario's Super Picross is yet another Super Famicom game, although this one is on the Wii U Virtual Console in Europe. This one takes a little while to get the hang of. You're pretty much drawing a picture, like a stamp in Mario Paint, but with gameplay like Minesweeper. The numbers on the sides determine how many blank spaces there should be, so you chisel away the appropriate spaces, and also marking the ones you don't hit, like bombs and Minesweeper. You're also timed, and if you make a mistake, you get time taken away from you. However, in the Wario-themed levels, the time counts up from zero, and you're not told if you make a mistake. This game is hard, but it's pretty interesting. Pieces is a game I don't think it's recommended often enough, either as a puzzle game or as a multiplayer game. Game. Yeah, on the surface you're literally just solving a jigsaw puzzle, and the goal is to solve it faster than your opponent. But what makes this game fun is all the special items that either help you or screw with your opponent. Like inverting their controls, or clearing their board entirely, or freezing their mouse cursor. There's a strong chance you and your opponent will hate each other after playing this game. Taking on more of a platforming slant is Trodlers, where your job is to lead these little creatures around the screen to the exit. There's a limited number of blocks for you to use to build a way to get them out so you can get to the next mission. There's also a time limit that you have to beat, which is always at least a few minutes. The missions, however, can vary in objectives. Sometimes you not only have to save the Trodlers, but also collect gemstones or destroy zombie Trodlers. Those you gotta prevent from escaping. There's also different kinds of blocks you can use, some of which are deadly to normal Trodlers, but unlike Lemmings, Trodlers has kind of a platformer aspect. You control your main character and move him around the screen to get stuff done, but you can use the mouse as well, which is really much easier. There's 99 levels, and the game really gets complicated as it goes along. Arkanoid Do It Again came out very, very late in the Super Nintendo's run, so it was widely ignored on its initial release. And you probably know what Arkanoid is, so I'll just say that this has got to be the best version of Arkanoid I've ever played, including the version on the TI-81 calculator I had in math class. This game even has a story, which seems needless. I mean, it's Arkanoid, but it's still pretty amusing. There's 99 levels, plus an editing mode to create your own levels, kind of like Excite Bike for NES. And this game allows for two players. How can you beat that? Overall, the game is very clean and very smooth, especially especially with the mouse, and it's one of the best puzzle games on the Super Nintendo. Switching gears a bit, there's Nobunaga's Ambition, a classic turn-based strategy game that got ported to several other systems. The story takes place during feudal Japan, and your goal is pretty straightforward, just conquer everything. There's four campaign scenarios where you need to create a decent enough military force to carry out your orders. Each turn on the overall map is a season change, but each turn during battle is only a day. So the game really requires you to be patient as you build up your forces. Pardon the pun, but this is a very ambitious game for its time. And it's a little clunky and vague as to what to do at times, but the Super Nintendo mouse makes this game so much more accessible, it's just a pain to play these kind of games with a D-pad. So if you ever wanted to dive into any of those Koei strategy games, and there's a lot of them, the first one I'd recommend is Nobunaga's Ambition, with the Super Nintendo mouse. For a change of pace, there's Shien's Revenge, a first-person arcade-style shooter that's pretty damn challenging. In a way, this game is kind of like a first-person shoot-'em-up, in that you really have to prioritize dodging stuff more than you do hitting enemies, because there's so much stuff coming at you. You can slash and block with your knife, and throw ninja stars. Anyway, I wanted to point out Shien's Revenge because it's a great example of a game that's ridiculous to play with a controller, but way more playable with a mouse. 
If you want the same kind of gameplay but a bit darker and with automatic weapons, there's T2, the arcade game. Now, this was awesome in the actual arcade because you had this ginormous gun to shoot with. So on the Super Nintendo, the game's kind of lackluster to say the least, but at least with the mouse, the game is actually not that bad. It's pretty one-dimensional though, but if you're into these kind of games, play it with the mouse. If you like the point-and-shoot arcade-style games, but with a little more levity and a touch of Sunset Riders, there's Tin Star. This game embraces its ridiculous nature with a cartoony vibe that almost reminds me of Earthworm Jim at times. There's a bit more variety here with some mini-games, and once again, I gotta stress the game is way better with the mouse. Not that it's that great to begin with, but it's a fun way to spend an hour. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.